WWE presents Survivor Series. All right, what's up, you guys? I am here with the Survivor Series 2009 pay per view review. So, this pay per view was pretty big at the time. It felt really important, which is something that uh, was good at the time. You know, one of your big four pay-per-views, the build was decent, and you really kind of had a pretty big card here. And it was really built during the Madison Square Garden episode of Raw. You know, that really helped kind of elevate this event. So we had two triple threat matches for the world title matches. Uh, I don't know if that was the best idea. It's a cool gimmick, I guess, but... I don't know, two triple threat matches. I feel like that's just maybe a little excessive. Um, but yeah, we had um, your Survivor Series traditional match. We had John Morrison, Matt Hardy, Finley, Evan Bourne, and Shelton Benjamin versus The Miz, Drew McIntyre, Jack Swagger, Sheamus, and Dolph Ziggler. You know, this is a fun little match, to be honest. It's a good opener. It's a good way to start the show out. Kind of gets you pumped for it. So, you know, that was good and everything. You know, it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing really memorable, but it's still, you know, it's decent enough. It's a good way to set the tone for the event. Uh, we had Rey Mysterio versus Batista. And this was right after Batista's heel turn at Bragging Rights 2009. Of course, he had the Fatal 4-Way match there, and Rey Mysterio um, had kind of screwed Batista over in winning the title. And he kind of had enough and just snapped. You know, this was kind of building for a while, so I give him credit for that one. But I feel like Batista hadn't really worked out being a heel yet. You know, 2010 heel Batista was phenomenal. You know, John Cena kissing babies and hugging fat women. And just having security and just being a great WWE champion that was a heel. Love that. Early 2010 Batista was great. Whereas here, he's just kind of kind of working it out. You know, this really wasn't much of a match per se. It's more just kind of a squash, which to me, it's a big four pay-per-view. I'd rather just have a match. And this rivalry kind of went nowhere, to be honest. So that's kind of disappointing. And speaking of disappointing, well, it's not really disappointing because it's kind of expected. We had the traditional Survivor Series elimination match for the Divas division. Disappointment. Uh, Mickey James, Molina, Kelly Kelly, and Gail Kim, and Eve versus Michelle McCool, Beth Phoenix, Alicia Fox, Layla, and Jillian Hall. Yeah. Talk about forgettable. And then we have our traditional Survivor Series match, the third one of the night here. Kofi Kingston, who is kind of your team captain here. With MVP Mark Henry, Christian, and R Truth versus Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, Ted DiBiase, CM Punk, and William Regal. So here's the thing Kofi Kingston was red hot going into this pay per view. He had that very famous moment in the Madison Square Garden Raw. You know, he did the boom drop onto the table which WWE tried to recreate again this year, but, you know, fuck that. You yeah, know, this was a genuinely cool moment. And and Kofi was really stepping up. He was cutting promos. He was really getting fans behind him. So that was, this was really cool to see. And then the most disappointing part is, you know, come 2010's event or even... A few years after that, nothing. Randy Orton, we all know the the whole stupid moment, you know, you're stupid. The, we all know that. You know, that really killed Kofi's push here. And, you know, it's just, I feel like Kofi didn't get his time to really, really just shine and show what he's capable of in 2009. You know, 2019, you know, obviously he became WWE champion and everything. But that's 10 years later. It took him 10 years to finally win a world title. And, 
you know, he made his debut in 2008, so 11 years. So, yeah. It's a good traditional Survivor Series match. But when going back and looking at it, it really means nothing. And that's the unfortunate part. This Randy Orton-Kofi Kingston rivalry was great. And you just blew it, you know, the next coming weeks even. So then we have the Triple Threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. You had Jericho, which was Big Show and Chris Jericho at the time. They were a tag team. Versus The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight Championship. Let me ask you this. Do you remember anything about this match other than Chris Jericho screaming, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot? Because a fan told him, go back to Toronto. And then Chris Jericho, of course, who's a genius, you know, has that rebuttal. What else do you remember from this match, though? This was predictable. Really, kind of this whole card was sort of predictable, especially the triple threat matches. You know, we all knew John Cena and Undertaker were retaining the titles. And that kind of takes us to John Cena versus Triple H and Shawn Michaels. And we all know how much I hate 2009 DX. You know, the PG DX, if you want to call them that. Fuck them, I hate them. I'll take 2006 DX any day over this shit. But, you know, DX versus John Cena, it's just kind of pretty predictable you're not going to have one member of dx win the title and not the other that'd be interesting which is why they wouldn't do it because it would be interesting god and then no this isn't me being a john cena hater i wasn't a fan of john cena back in 2009 you know i am more of a fan now but he was a good champion we all know this so it made sense for him to retain you know even undertaker made sense for him to retain. So, I just felt like these triple threat matches were just kind of useless. You know, you could have just made one of them a one-on-one -on -one match. You know, Undertaker versus Chris Jericho, that would have been cool to see. And I didn't want to see Undertaker versus Big Show again. God, no. But, you know, these matches were just predictable and not very memorable. But one good thing is during the WWE t title triple threat match, you know, we had Shawn Michaels immediately super kick Triple H to really show the implications of the match. So I really give him credit for that booking decision. But other than that, just kind of a forgettable main event. That doesn't make this pay-per-view bad, though. But it doesn't make it great. I would really put this Survivor Series in the middle somewhere if you were to rank them. I still can watch it. I can fully enjoy it. You know, I've watched this pay-per-view many times. And it's fun to go back and rewatch it, to be honest. So I'm going to give Survivor Series 2009... I'm going to give it a C+. And it doesn't age very well, like I said, because of the um, Randy Orton, Kofi Kingston debacle. But as an event itself, I think it's good. But it's not great. But it's not bad. You know, it's not Survivor Series 2010. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. For now, this has been the DVD Freak. Peace out.